Cop City um, is the proposed uh, uh, development of a urban warfare training center for police here in the city of Atlanta. This would be a new training facility to allow the police to further develop and hone their oppression of poor and marginalized people. These are not everyday facilities like classroom space or learning how to like drive between orange traffic cones. It's going to include um, you know, military grade training facilities, uh, bomb testing sites. A shoot house, uh, meaning a mock house, a mock village, a mock city, if you will. Uh, for tactical training, active shooter training. Tear gas deployment uh, capabilities. There would also be an EVOC, Emergency Vehicle Operations course. Toys, basically. These, these are toys for cops. It's, uh, you know, proposed to, to be built in the Weilani or South River Forest. Uh, 381 or so acres of that forest. Um, and so, you know, they're, they're gonna have to really destroy a large part of the environment to develop it. They want to build up this huge militarized training station so they can continue to develop and hone their techniques of oppressing and brutalizing black and brown people, poor and marginalized people, controlling crowds, riots in the wake of the 2020 George Floyd uprising. Its real name is the Atlanta Public Safety Training Center. First and foremost, this land and not just this, these specific land parcels, but everywhere around us is stolen indigenous land. This land specifically was inhabited by the Muscogee. We, you may have heard them referred to in school as the Creek. After it was stolen, it was a plantation. Um, there were many plantations in this area. The family that we believe owned the plantation that the prison farm itself was on. We believe it was the Key family. We believe that this is the same Key family that appeared on an 1860 slave census, showing that they owned 19 slaves on this land. Um, in 1911, uh, another mem member of the Key family sold, I believe, 268 acres to the city of Atlanta. Farming and prison operations kind of began properly, at least by the late 1920s, early 1930s. So certainly by late 1930s, 1940s, the Atlanta City Prison Farm was well underway. And the, the, the horror stories begin pretty quickly. Samuel Baines, a 36-year-old black man, dropped dead shortly after a patrolman woke him up to get dressed. Mark Isaiah Willingham died after becoming sick. Robert Reynolds, 49, black man, died from head injuries prompting an investigation. In reference to Reynolds, mayoral candidate Charlie Brown declared, approximately 10 prisoners have died in the jail in the last four years under so-called mysterious circumstances. Whether it was an intentional lack of health care to outright abuse and murder, people died there.
We do not have an exact date for when the prison farm closed, but we do know, obviously, the equipment was sold off in 89 or 90. Um, and there's discussion around 1995 or 1996 of using the prison farm to uh, house the city's homeless during the Olympics. Throughout the 90s and the 2000s, tires were dumped there, industrial waste was dumped here. We don't really know just how poisoned this land is. This is stolen Muscogee land. This land was a plantation. This land was a prison farm, which is just another word for a plantation. People were raped here, people were sprayed with chemicals here, people died here. People's bodies were rented out for labor and bussed off to other parts of the city from this land. We've used this land as a dumping ground. We have not respected this land and we have not respected the people that lived on and were forcibly held on this land. And now we want to give it to the police. The establishment of Cop City will really uh, affect the entire country. Atlanta uh, will be a leading exporter of a lot of violent tactics, uh, uh, police tactics, if this um, you know, uh, training compound is, is built, you know, training op uh, police officers in urban warfare tactics and with military grade weaponry um, is, is really dangerous. Uh, uh, and, you know, we've seen examples of that through, um, you know, the killings of folks like Anthony Hill and Shamarian Robinson, um, you know, Matthew Williams and Rayshard Brooks. Uh, those are examples of how, you know, militarized tactics really only increase the likelihood that the police will uh, kill. We see it as important to, to, to address or, or try to stop the development of this project um, in order to, to um, increase safe, the safety of, 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 you know, black, poor, and working class people in the city. This project will increase um, and intensify gentrification in the area. Gentrification is really just the process of um, you know, of removal. In, in the beginning, it was settlers, right? Like, you know, settlers moved in and, and you know, removed the, the original people who lived here. Police are really the enforcers uh, of, of these processes. Um, you know, when we think about how their role in terms of criminalizing and incarcerating um, black and, and brown uh, um, people, uh, that effectively removes um, those uh, people from the neighborhood and allows for, um, you know, wealthier, often white residents to, to take their place. Um, and so uh, we can point to the example of, you know, the many evictions that have taken place um, and, and police really playing a key role in, in evicting people. So we, we, we see Cop City as um, a force to, to, to really break up the neighborhood and, and um, you know, uh, allow for, um, I guess, wealthier residents who move in and, and um, you know, just changing the, the, the makeup of the neighborhood. We understand that this will um, also just accelerate climate change, right? Uh, uh, and so, you know, the, the impacts of that will be felt um, uh, um, by and large by the surrounding communities, which are again, you know, black and, and, and brown. Destroying the forest will bring about things like flooding and, and um, you know, decreased air quality uh, and, and rising heat levels, all of which will be felt, you know, again, disproportionately by, you know, the black surrounding neighborhoods, um, but really all of Atlanta. It's important as we think about, you know, the struggle to defeat climate change, uh, like maintaining the forest is, is key to that. And, you know, uh, again, climate change is something that is already being felt disproportionately by, by black and brown communities. And so we think, you know, the, the Weilani forest is, is so key and for them to destroy 381 acres of it um, uh, to build this militarized um, urban warfare training facility is um, unconscionable. We, we can't allow that to happen. My experience living in this forest has been wild beyond imagination. We have something like seven or eight platforms and tree houses up now. This is the second wave of this. The cops came in 
last May and tore down a bunch of tree houses, but we probably rebuilt them. You know, it does a number of things. First of all, it brings me a lot of joy to be able to build my own house in this forest as an act of resistance to the police, um, as a tactic that frustrates them week after week, raid after raid. And, you know, I think that's really what it is right now. And it is also stopping construction. And, um, you know, this is a, a nonviolent form of resistance, protecting the trees along with tying trees together so they can't be felled. Um, people in this movement also build barricades to prevent the cops from moving through the woods, to prevent the movement of machinery through the woods. The blend of the symbolic and the practical is definitely really important here. Tree sits are inspiring. They can mobilize people to take more risks with whatever level they're comfortable with. There's a huge diversity of tactics in this movement. Property such as machines, windows, are not more important than living things and living people. And that sort of resistance is, is really the least that people can do in response to the violence that is inflicted daily by the police and the state. Just our visible presence here, whether it's in the line of construction or not, is a deterrence from construction. People see the militancy and the tactics that are being employed here, and it inspires, it has inspired actions all across the country. This movement is completely autonomous and decentralized and not controlled or directed by any sort of organization, nonprofit or otherwise. There's, there's no institutions, no formal leaders. There are people doing what they feel is right. And that means that we can be extremely creative and we can do what's effective rather than sticking to tactics that have been tried and tried again with uh, little to no successes. We've organized protests uh, uh, and we've also done work to get the word out um, and, and you know, let uh, the surrounding communities know what's happening because there, there's been very little transparency coming from you know, the folks behind the project uh, like the Atlanta Police Foundation and you know, City Council um, and so we've, you know, worked to, uh, uh, you know, just canvas uh, surrounding neighborhoods just to, you know, knock on doors and let people know what's happening in their, uh, in their neighborhood. Um, because we understand that, you know, as the police, you know, continue to militarize, that there's no way that, you know, that they'll be able to fully meet the needs of our communities. Um, that, you know, we, we need to rely on each other um, in, in order to, to defend ourselves, to provide for a safe and secure um, environment for for ourselves and our, our communities that's looked like building out you know community defense programs they include things like medic training and first aid and you know disaster relief and um, you know uh, restorative and transformative justice practices that, that really build uh, community defense outside of you know what the police or the state might offer a couple of our programs are more focused on how do we keep residents in place how do we make sure that we maintain the character of the neighborhood and the and ensure that folks are uh, better equipped to stay where they'd like to stay in, in their in their um, in their homes, um, and so that has meant you know providing things like seven hundred and fifty dollars a month to residents who ask for you know code enforcement, um, rental assistance, or um, you know ho home repairs, and so that is one program we offer to um, residents in, in South Atlanta. Um, we are also uh, engaged in a um, Liberation Program, which is a, a program we use to distribute food, um, household and cleaning items to, you know, folks who ask for it, uh, just to make sure that people have more resources to help them, uh, you know, satisfy their, their basic needs. 
the work of community movement builders we see as you know uh, a, a part of the broader movement uh, in the sense that there's a lot of uh, work taking place here directly in the forest. Um, there are forest defenders who are occupying space and you know working to prevent you know trees from being cut down and, and development from taking place. Um, and our work is is meant to complement and and you know uh, be in concert with with those efforts by really doing some more community defense. We we want to protect the safety and security of of our communities. And this this project won't do that. It will only you know worsen those uh, uh, the the safety and security of those of those uh, of the communities that we live in. People are ready for something else. People are grasping tangibly the suffocating brutality of the police state, the imminence and immediacy of climate change and ecological devastation. It's not some far off dystopia, it's already here and people are responding in kind. People need to know that Cop City will never be built, but we're not going anywhere. And that this resistance is not only absolutely necessary, but it's a lot of fun. And it frequently feels really good to resist something that is just so ontologically evil. No compromise in defense of, of Mother Earth. No compromise in defense of our lives. No compromise in defense of our freedom, our autonomy. We're gonna stop Cop City.